raise your glass pink. It's Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Uh, for some reason, my video cuts out. Uh, so be it. I'm kind of running into a time crunch here, so I'm just going to kind of try to power through this. But I got a great viewer success story. She writes amazingly. She didn't say I could say who she is, but please comment if you uh, if uh, if it's... Uh, you know, if it's you and you want to take credit for it, that would be wonderful. And I'll verify that, of course. Um, but it's just uh, well done. It's over a span of time. There's some challenge and trauma and everything in between. And then success at the end. It's a beautiful story and so well written. So I guess I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can. Because, again, it's a little bit long. But, again, it's so well written. So, again, covers many, many aspects. This is a wonderful story. I hope you guys enjoy it. Because I certainly did the first time. In August of 2016, I was tired of the dating scene. I wrote a list of all the qualities I wanted in a partner, and then I just let it go. Figured I would meet him when I was meant to. I focused on how happy I was with my job and my roommate and our life, thus forgetting all about my list and my request to the universe. I did not fully know the impact that this would have and later helped me during my process this summer. Ten days later, I received a message from my person on a dating profile that I had forgotten about. We lived pretty close to each other, so I was shocked that I had not seen his profile show up before. He was and is everything I had asked the universe for and so much more. Our relationship began the day he messaged me and when we first felt we had known each other forever. He was a familiar stranger that you hear about. It was absolutely mind-blowing, and we were blissfully happy. In December 2016, he was diagnosed with a tumor in his thigh. I was by his side for everything and through the recovery. We became incredibly close. He told me he loved me and asked if I would move in with him to begin our life together in May 2017, when my lease was up. We immediately began to plan our lives, and so we were excited. You would have thought this was the straight out of the movies. As the months passed, old issues of mine began to pop up. No fault of my person's. He told me he loved me. I was the most beautiful woman he had ever known. He wanted to marry me. I was the love of his life, etc. Every single day, yet this did not erase my insecurities from my past relationships. I instead projected my fears onto him, and it began to push him away. The most loving person on the planet can only take so much, and I pushed and pushed because I was terrified he would leave me. I ended up creating this on the outside. I also had fears of one female friend of his because she had feelings for him. I later confirmed this, and my fears became even worse. We tried to get through it, but the damage was done. I had gone from this loving, happy, secure woman to questioning everything he did. It got to the point where he didn't feel he could even tell me the meaning, uh, tell me he wanted a weekend for himself because I would question why. This is the true meaning of us pushed out. Because I was afraid of losing him, I was actually losing him in real life. In May, it came time to move in. He said he wasn't ready because of other circumstances. Plus, I was smothering him. I pushed even harder, and I moved in. One week later, he broke up with me, stating he no longer felt the same, and he wanted me out of his life. I was devastated. I couldn't believe the love of my life would leave me. It was then that I decided to do things differently than I have ever done. And I would work on myself and get him back. I knew the love was still there, but I had done this and I had created this. I remained friends with him on Facebook, but I was thinking horrible thoughts that he had had to be out dating someone right away to replace me. I began looking for meditations and ways to connect with him. I found Agnes Vivarelli and her meditation to create a text message. It worked. I was blown away, so I listened to more videos and then found Dan. I was starting to understand how we all do this to ourselves, and I began to work on me instantly. I started running again, spending time with my friends. I made sure to post that I, what I was doing on Facebook, but not in an obnoxious way. I wanted him to see I was living my life. I did not smother him with messages, and randomly, about every three days or so, he would find something odd to tell me, and he would reach out. Then... He would back off. This continued for about a month or so, but I noticed that the more work I did on me with self-love, the more he wanted to talk. The conversation was not flirty, just general chit-chat, but I could tell he was curious about my new attitude and what I was up to. I had to learn that when he was silent, 
not to let that get the best of me. There were many nights of tears, frustration, and hurt, but I knew I was not growing through it all. I knew I was growing through it all. I never once stopped believing that I would marry this man. I never stopped believing we would get back together. That is what kept me going when all when I would see things on social media that I didn't like. I learned you don't go looking for anything you don't want to find. If you look hard enough, you will create it. So listen to Dan and Anya's blah blah blah. Uh, so they, you know, uh, so they'll stop being creepy. <laughs> I mailed, uh, I emailed Anya's, and she sent me a message telling me not to focus on creating another person with my fears, or it would happen again. She told me I was in fact still being needy, and I must focus on self love. I took this to heart, and I realized I had much to work, much work to do. I also began emailing me, and that helped also. So the beginning of July, he found that his tumor had come back. Okay, just making sure we're not terribly long. I told him I was supportive of him, and I would stand by his side the whole time. This was all I could do, since I had not seen him in a month. We talked every few days, and as we got to August, we began to talk daily through just text messages. We started to make plans to go hiking before his surgery, and then he got the call from his doctor. She wanted to do the surgery the next day. I asked if he wanted me there. He did not, but he stayed in touch with me and messaged me before and after. At this point, I had to let go of caring whether he was dating someone else or had been physically close with any other person. It didn't matter to me anymore. Oddly enough, on his way home from the hospital, he randomly told me that he had not been with, uh, with a single other person since me, and he was not ready to date others. This blew me away, and it gave me renewed hope. He told me he wanted to see me, and I went to his house two days after his surgery. I had not seen him in six weeks, so I was very nervous. When I got there, he hugged me and sat with his arm around me as if nothing had changed. I spent the evening doing everything I could for him around the house. I just wanted to help, and I had no expectation of anything other than I wanted to give him the love through helping after his surgery. He asked me to stay the night, and once again, I was shocked. I stayed. Nothing happened other than he held me the entire night. The very next week, he asked me on a road trip to Denver. I drove, since he still couldn't with the pain meds. Before the trip, I asked the universe to open his heart to me and allow me to remember how he felt for me. We had a wonderful time, and the very next weekend, he invited me over, and I stayed from Sunday until Monday. It was as if nothing had changed other than he was reserved. No kissing or affection other than he would hold me all night while we slept, and we would hold hands while we were sleeping. I could feel the lust, this love between us, but it was like this flame was dim. It was there, but not fully. The next week, he pulled back. This caused major doubt, and I panicked. I began Facebook stalking, and it took me about a week to get myself under control. Within another week, he'd asked me to come to the movies with him and his father on, uh, with his, him and his father on Sunday, which was something I had done all the time in the, in the past. Where am I? I'm getting lost here. Which is uh, something I'd done all the time we were together, but not since. I took this as a wonderful sign from the universe that since he wanted me around family again and that his feelings were coming back. This became our routine again for a few weeks. He also began radiation, and his mood changed after that. from that, along with him withdrawing from me. It was hard to understand if I was doing it or if it was because of the treatments. Then a couple weeks later, things progressed some with the, the affection. But I didn't want to scare him off or ruin it, so I just didn't say anything to him. We continued to grow closer and spend more time together. I wanted to show him that I was not the same smothering person I had become. There were, a, there were several things that came up that normally I would have blown up and lost my cool about with him, and I believe he expected that reaction. Not once did I lose my cool. I remained calm and understanding and kind. I still felt I needed more of a sign, so I asked the universe if I could talk with his brother and get confirmation of what I already knew, which was that he had not been with anyone since me and that his feelings were returning. His brother and I were very close, but this time we, he had messaged me and just we just began to tell me all these things that I had asked the universe for. 
He told me that my person had not been with a single date that he had known of since me, and no one had stayed at his house. He said he knew his brother loved me, and that the way things had been progressing with the time they had spent, that it was a good sign. I thanked the universe repeatedly and made plans to see my person the next day. It was this same weekend I experienced the most growth. I realized that I had three issues that stemmed up from the past relationships, and once I figured that out, it was like a light bulb went off. I cried tears of relief because I finally knew the source and why I had done these things to my person. I could finally let it go. And since then, it has been an incredibly fast ride. The past two weeks have blown my mind. I began focusing on allowing the universe to do the work and trusting it would come. He agreed to come with me to my company holiday party at a golf driving range that is much more like an arcade. This was a huge deal because everyone knew him from last year and they knew we had parted ways. I did not know what to expect, but I was excited and I let the universe have full control. We had the best time. We laughed, and, and he looked at me in ways I had not seen in months. We were not lovey and affectionate, but he was kind and genuine. It was amazing. As we were heading to his house, he got a call from his military boss telling him he needed to go on base for something in a, for a few hours. I followed him to his house, and he grabbed uh, his uniform to leave, and he hugged me and kissed me goodbye. My mind was blown. He had not done that, and since we had been around each other again, uh, so I had not done that since then. Then he got home around 3.30 in the morning. We had a road trip planned, but we were both so tired and, and slept in, and then he took me to breakfast. We spent the day watching football and relaxing, since this was very cold and windy here. The next morning we got up for our road trip, left in happy moods. We took our dog with us, and the vibe was happy and fun. Then the universe decided we were ready to have the talk. We were driving through the mountains, and I don't even really know what got it started, but it kind of it all kind of came pouring out. I talked about how I didn't trust him before, but that I do now, and how I had to work on me, and I didn't plan on grilling him or bombarding him, but we needed to talk. He told me he knew we needed to. I cried and could barely get out everything I wanted to say. I told him I was so sorry for how I had treated him when I was so selfish. I put it all out there. I told him that if he thought he wanted to try again, that it would not be what he, it was before. I was, not, I was not that selfish person, and we would start fresh and brand new. I wasn't obsessive or in a place where I had to know where he, what he was doing at all time. I told him that I had worked on myself and that I had learned what unconditional love is and that I would love him whether he was with me or not, because I didn't need him to love back in order for me to feel good. He remained quiet but thoughtful. I told him I didn't know what we were, but that I was fine with how things are. He told me he holds back some with affection, because he never wanted me to think he wanted me just for sex, and he hadn't talked about it, so he didn't want to lead me on and wasn't sure what we were either. He told me the chemistry and connection is still there, very much in fact, and that he just isn't sure if he's ready to fully go back into this relationship. He reaffirmed that yes, I can trust him and that there is no one else. He has no intentions of trying to find another person. He said after we went to Denver, he realized he very much still had feelings for me, which was, which this was totally the universe doing things behind the scenes because I had no idea it was even happening on the road trip. He said he was set up on the one blind date, and he went out about a week after Denver, and he realized, really felt our connection and didn't want anyone else. He said he noticed my growth and how positive and happy I am and all my progress, and it makes him happy. I told him I want to be friends with a girl who is in love with him, I told him I want to be, yeah, friends with a a girl who was in love with him and his friend's wife. And they were the only two I had struggled with during our projections of them. No idea what, I'm reading this weird, I'm sure. Um, And he said he would never in a million years sleep with the girl who had been in love with him or anyone else for that matter. 
Right. There was someone else. She was afraid and he wanted her. And then she basically said, he told her, no, I would never sleep with her. There we go. That's what that's all about. She has stayed the night and slept on the couch when he hasn't been home and his brother had a ton of people over, but only once when he was, was home and they had company and she wouldn't sleep over in his bed. And that was just for me. He knows my feelings didn't change. And I told him I would love him for the rest of my life. He said he cares about me a lot still. And he has never, ever spent time with an ex like we do, ever. He has never gotten back together with anyone after a breakup, and that I mean more to him than anyone else has, ever. We're getting there, I swear, people. He began to open up even more and said he was thought about us getting back together often. He looks forward to our time together. He just isn't ready to be fully what we were because after all of this radiation, he's not himself. And I told him that, Nothing would change from now. I told him if he wants alone time, that's fine. If he wants to be a hermit for a night, just tell me, and I will do my own thing. I am secure, and I know that it isn't a person, it's not personal against me. He said he still thinks of me during the day, not as much as before, but because he's also tired all the time. He said I am not imagining our connection. It's there and very real. He went on one blind date and it was like nope nope i told him we can take it slow and keep going he said he's oh he could we could go and keep it going he said smiled and said he's good with that i told him we can be affectionate and i don't take it as he wants me just for physical stuff he tells me he tells his friends we are spending time together so they know i am not a secret my things are in his shower and my sink and the bathroom so there's no secrets there. So we agreed we are committed, but not officially back together talking marriage like we were, just talking, just taking it slow. No pressure. The entire drive home was happy and light. We felt that a weight had been lifted. Once we returned to his house, he stopped me in the hallway and hugged me. Then he kissed me. Something so ordinary, but this time I felt the affection behind it. The remainder of the night I was blown away. I looked at him and felt like I had my boyfriend back. The flame between us was blazing. He was himself, not holding back any longer. It hit me. I had done this. We were taking things slow and learning each other all over again. We had gone from not speaking, him telling me he did not love me anymore, to this. I knew it would feel wonderful, but I never knew it would be this amazing. Since Sunday, we have been talking even more. Our conversation is light and fun. It's easy. I do not have to feel like I am dragging it out of him. When he reads my messages but doesn't reply, I know he will later when he fills up to it. Just that the belief alone has made him reply quicker than before. I do not push him. I have anxiety when he doesn't respond. I don't push him or have anxiety when he doesn't respond. I trust him. I trust the universe. All along, I had signs. I did not have confirmation from him. I just had to trust the universe, trust the signs. I know that I have more work to do, and this will take a conscious effort within me to keep myself on track so that I do not slip into old habits. I still do the self-love meditations, ahead-in-time meditations, and the surrender meditations. I make sure I start my day by saying the things I am grateful for. I write down my grateful list when I am having a hard time. But I make time for meditating and quieting my mind. This is so important. Every single thought you think has power. And how much power depends on what on you and how much energy you put into it. Thought transmission is real. Several times lately, we were together. He says things that I thought of him saying to me. When I was focused on him. A few more times I knew what messages he was writing me before it even sent. My best advice is to love yourself. Be whole without them. Be happy without receiving a text or phone call. Then watch your thoughts. If you find anything focusing on negative thoughts, replace it with a positive one. Anything. And then another and another. Don't talk to outside people who do not understand what you are trying to do. They will discourage you. Do not believe everything your mind is trying to tell you either. 
Your higher self would never say mean or nasty negative things, ever. Let me repeat that. Your higher self will never, ever say mean or nasty things about you. So if that's what you're saying and are hearing, that is not your higher self talking to you. That is fears and doubts talking. That's exactly right. Love yourself so much that others will see it and know that you do. Radiate it out of yourself without having the ulterior motive of getting anything from anyone. That's neediness, and it's not attractive. Don't try to force anything. No interactions. Let it flow. This works. It works amazing when we let go. Sometimes it takes a lot of reassurance, a lot of emails telling you that you are doing the right thing. It takes someone saying that you are being ridiculous and you need to get back on track. But trust it. Listen to people that are trying to tell you these things. It does work. I hope this helps a lot, guys. I know it was super long and I apologize for that, but it's such a good story. And I am realizing how hard it is to read 23 minutes live and not jack it up. But oh well, it's as good (laughs) as I can. Uh, Hopefully you guys enjoy that. I apologize for any of the errors that may have been in there. Going out with Justin Timberlake. Can't stop this feeling. It's Dan Radio Style. Something magical. It's in the air. It's in my blood. It's rushing on. I don't need no reason. Don't be control. I fly so high, no ceiling when I'm in my zone. Cause I got that. 